Now, since we're keeping everything on a single slide, we want to keep everything on just one slide. We can't use Storyline's built-in question slides, but that's totally okay because we can use some simple triggers to simulate our own question slides and get multiple questions on just this one slide. And we're going to do that in this lesson. So down here in the slide layers, we want to create a new slide layer and I'm going to name this Q1. Now you'll notice as soon as we create the layer that that background, that custom layout uh, that we created is automatically applied. And we did that, remember, when we went to uh, the Feedback Master back in the first tutorial and we added that background graphic for this uh, layout. And so that's how the slide layers work. They actually work with the Feedback Masters and that's exactly what we wanted. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add my boxes here for the question and choices. Certainly not getting very fancy in this example, but um, hopefully you get enough of an idea that you could uh, work from that when you are building your own projects. And maybe just a tinge of transparency here. All right, that works. Control, click, drag, and I'll make a copy of this, and I'll use this as the basis for my first choice. All right, that'll work. I'm gonna name this real quick, button correct, and I'll call this box. Yes, renaming all of these takes time, but the benefit to us is that it helps us organize and track all the different objects that we're working with. All right. Looks like I need to update the color here because it's set to white. So there's my correct choice. And just to add some visual feedback for the learner when they mouse over and select each of these buttons, we'll go ahead and add a hover state. And we can make that just a little bit lighter blue. And then we'll make a selected, and the selected state is the state that's that's visible when they've actually clicked one of the choices. Now we'll make that white. All right, super simple, nothing fancy. Uh, now that I have this created, I can uh, copy it. So control click drag, and I'm gonna change the text here on the label to incorrect choice. And it should update across all three states. Yes, it does. And let's duplicate it two more times. So it's not button correct, it's button, button incorrect one. I'm just gonna copy this text here, and make that button incorrect two, and three. So those are the three incorrects, and then here's my, my one correct button. Go ahead and set these up and align them to the left, and then distribute their horizontally or vertically. All right, looks pretty good for my question slide. The last thing I'll do is make a button set out of each of these, because I only want one of these to be selected at any one time. And we do that by selecting the uh, all the objects, all the buttons, choose button set, and then we'll do button set one. And that way, when we select each of these, only one of these objects uh, will be visibly selected. And to test that, just to verify, it's a good time to test it now. Let's jump back down to the base layer, the travel game layer, and we already had that first marker button that we set up. Let's go ahead and add a trigger that says, uh, show me that layer, and let's just test it. So show layer, and we only have one, so it's the Q1 layer when I click the button marker. And go ahead and just preview the slide. All right, so you can see how the, the hover effect's working here on our marker. I click it, there's my layer. I should only be able to have one of these selected, and that is working correctly, right? So I have uh, I have the hovers on all of these, but when I click one, only one is showing me that dark blue uh, color. Go ahead and close out. And I'm gonna jump back over to that element slide and grab that submit button that I created. So control C to copy it. Jump over here and let's go over to the slide one, uh, Q1, and control V to paste it. And there's my button. So I just realized I need to have one more state here. So I did set up my elements, but um, sometimes you do forget things. 
going to edit this and then make a disabled state. So a disabled state will just mean that this button is inactive until we tell it to become active. And I'm just gonna basically reduce the opacity of the transparency here, maybe to 50. And the line style to 50. Then I'll lighten the text a little bit too. So now that I'm making this change, I'm gonna copy that button back over to my, my holding slide just so I have it there. So done editing states. Control C to copy it, and I will get rid of this one. Let me paste the new one here first. There it is, and I'll get rid of that one. So just had to make that update. I don't need the uh, disable state for the continue button, but I do, and I will need it for um, for the uh, submit button. All right. So at this point, I am I have my question set up. I want to go ahead and start working with the submit button now. I don't want the learners to be able to click the submit button and immediately submit it without making a, 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 a choice first, right? They might just click the button because it's active and they haven't made any choices here. So what I want to have happen is disable. I want to set the initial state here for the submit button to disabled and only have it appear once the learners have at least selected one of the four choices. And we do that by, actually, let me name this real quick. Button submit. So there's my submit button. So what I want to have happen is what? I want to say change the state of my submit button, right? Change the state of the submit button to normal when the state of any one of these four choices is selected. So when the state, not all of, just any one of, because we can't get all four of these selected at one time, right? So we want button correct, button incorrect, and incorrect. So when any one of those is selected, go ahead and change it to normal. Perfect. And that at least lets us have that set up. Now, at this point, this is really all we can do on this slide. In the next tutorial, we'll set up the feedback uh, slides, the correct and incorrect for this, this uh, question. And then we'll have to return back here and make a couple additional triggers to tell uh, Storyline which layer to show based on the choice. But at this point, we're all set up on this current slide, this question slide, and we'll see you in the next movie.